Good morning and welcome to the channel. My name is Varska, and today we're going to be playing an awesome game called Banished. Uh, this is going to be the first episode in probably a, a medium length series. Uh, now, Banished is done by Shining Rock Software, it's an independent developer, and it is one of the hardest games I think I've ever played. <clears throat> and it's not so much hard once you learn how to play it. But it is just a really, really difficult game to get a grip on. And I actually, <laughs> I've had to install so many mods to be able to play this regularly that I no longer know how to play without the mods. So real quick, I'm going to go ahead and read off what mods I've got, um, give a quick overview of what they do, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So I have, oh yeah, that's right. So I have a chapel enhancement that allows you to have more people in your chapel so you're not constantly building chapels. I have the better timber mill, which I haven't really noticed too much about that. I, I haven't really played around with it, so we'll get into that as we go further. The enhanced her uh, herbalist, which allows your herbalist to, of course, work better. <clears throat> Extra leather, which gives you more leather. Hard labor. So, hard labor is pretty cool. Uh, the citizens doesn't carry more, because they don't carry jack squat in vanilla. Uh, they move faster, which definitely <laughs> helps a lot, especially once you get those larger towns above a population of 500. It's like... Um, and they will travel further for their jobs, which, once again, in a large town, is amazing. And, and the mods I have kind of make it more realistic, I'd say. Now, here we have improved farming. Um, it just makes all of the farming better. Uh, so you can increase the size. Uh, you can place it on all sorts of different ground. Um, you're not really as limited. If there's a small hill, you can place a farm over and it's going to be fine. Improved woodcutter, which is self-explanatory, although you do actually have to assign the extra workers in there. Um, more terrain, just because when you're starting a game, you constantly get crappy, crappy locations where your villagers settle. So instead of starting the game over and over and over and over just to find a place that not only looks good, but has good positioning for you to be able to farm, for you to be able to still access the water and everything, to still be around forests and not have a mountain right in the middle of your town, it helps. It, um, <clears throat> it adds some pretty cool maps. I haven't played with uh, Swamp yet, but I've played with Caldera, uh, Big, or Plains, Big Lake. I haven't tried... <laughs> Flooded Plains are Waterworld, just because a medieval village, they're not going to settle in a hellhole. Um, when, they, when you're traveling from a boat because you've been banished from your lands, yes, you're trying to find somewhere quickly, but you're also going to try to find somewhere that is actually going to be beneficial to live. Villages don't just pop up in the middle of nowhere. They pop up in locations with good resources, access to fresh water generally, um, trade routes, good farming land. I mean, if you're not popping into those, you're, you're generally not going to find a medieval village starting unless there is a reason for it to start. Uh, we've got rocks respawn because, dear gods, we destroy so many rocks. <laughs> uh, the stone bridge, just because, you know, we have stone walkways, why not have stone bridges? They look better, they're nicer. Um, the supermarket... Okay, if there's a market, just a market in a tiny, tiny village, people from all across that village are going to that one market. It doesn't make sense that, you know, only people within a couple blocks are going to it. So I think that's a very, very, very realistic mod addition. Um, the Toolmaker, it adds some new tools because sometimes you really can't get the resources early enough and you enter a tool apocalypse. And a tool apocalypse will, if you're not careful, it will absolutely end your town. Uh, tree growth in life, it just increases the rate. Um, that, that's not so much realistic, but it does kind of make up for the fact that the trees really don't do much. 
Uh, when your villagers are cutting down these trees, there's going to be so little resources coming from those trees. Like, you, you shouldn't get, like, I think it's like 10 or 15 firewood from a tree. No, you can get a lot more firewood from a tree. Um, unlimited mines and quarries, just because the limit that they have set in the game, too short. A quarry is not going to be completely empty in 5-10 years. Mine's not going to be empty in 5-10 years. I mean, sometimes they are if they're crappy mines, but, you know, I don't want to have this giant, unremovable, ugly thing just sit in my town. When it, And you could fill in a quarry if you wanted to, but I don't, I'd rather just not get rid of them and have them work effectively forever. One year is one year. This is probably the most helpful and most realistic mod that I've got in here. Um, so the citizens age a lot slower. Uh, they become laborers at the age of six, which is a lot more realistic to a medieval village. Um, and students stay in school till around nine. Villagers carry more uh, and move move in together more effectively. Um, they can start. I believe they can have babies between the ages of 15 and 35. Their max age increases. Um, food adjustments, tool penalties, uh, and other things. Tombstones stay for 100 years. So it's a lot, adds a lot of realism. Because I think the game is harder than real life in its vanilla form. Increased resources, just because the resources that they do give you, they don't give you a lot, and it, it doesn't really. It's not enough to really grow your village without struggling. And then the intensified fishing docks, just because, you know, fish, is, fish has been a main staple for so many different cultures. And in-game, it doesn't generate enough fish. So now that I've spent way too long talking about the mods, um, we're actually going to go ahead and create a new town. So, I don't really have a name. So, mm, I've got a giant jar of ginger sitting on my desk for some reason. So, I am going to name this town Ginger. Ginger. And let's go ahead, we're, we'll set it up on Caldera. And we're, we're not going to go huge... Because huge is absolutely huge. I'm just going to go with... Uh, let's stay with large. Climate. We'll go with a fair climate. I have never once played with disasters. And that's because I'm terrified of the game in the easiest version. So, I say... I say we, we give it a shot. Uh, starting conditions... We'll make a medium. <laughs> Whatever, you know? And, uh... Here we go. So... <clears throat> because I've never played with disasters, this is an entirely new experience for me. Um, and I will... I'd like to warn you, because this is... Probably one of the first videos I'll be uploading to my channel. I'm going to let you know that... Well, I am a gamer. I love gaming. It's all I do. Not all I do. I have a job and a girlfriend. And obviously, as you just maybe heard screaming in the background, a cat. But I absolutely love gaming. It's what I do. But I'm not particularly good at it. Um, I try to be okay. All she does is scream. Um, <clears throat> I try to be okay at gaming. And there's some games where I actually have a little bit of pride on how good I am. Um, one of them being Elder Scrolls Legends, which we'll do a series on. Oh, and we are in. So first things first, we are going to pause because I'm always terrified when I start off. I want to check out the land. So the cool thing about the Caldera is there's, like, no hills at all. You just get this huge... Actually, I'll believe I can pull up a map on here. I don't use the map often. But as you can see on the mini-map, it's just a giant, lovely circle, which is what a caldera is. Cops volcano thing. With a nice lake in it. We got two little rivers going through. 
and we are here. Yup. So there is a lot of room to go around. Um, it's not going to be too crazy. So let me go ahead and open up my general statistics, which will show our resources. And the event... No, not the event log. I hate the event log. <sighs> the professions. Now, I normally throw it in right here, but I realize that I am in the way. So I guess I will move it up here, and I will have to get used to it, which... I don't have OCD, but... I guess I just developed it right there. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to play the first year. But we're going to do a little bit of planning first. So we have a storage barn. We have no houses. We have a population of 10 plus 8 children. The children aren't going to do jack squat because they're children and all they do is move chop of us. No, I'm joking. Kids are better. For, there's plenty of better things for that kids are. They're not just moochers. Um, so, I have very little stone, very little iron, very little wood, and very little firewood. Oh gods, so we're not even going to survive winter, I don't think. So, normally I start with the stone houses because I, you start off on easy, you start off with a little bit more resources and the stone houses not even in the long run are better they're just 100 percent better you don't have to get as much fuel for heating but we really really can't afford that right now i guess we're just gonna do like a, a western strip kind of thing going on starting off so we got a few houses i I'm going to throw up a fishing dock because multi multiple different food sources are better for your health bar right here and also your ha your happiness. If you're not working with a bunch of different food sources, you're going to you're going to kill off your people pretty quickly. Now, I have never actually started by using a gatherer's hut. I've read about it online, about how amazingly spectacular they are. And we'll put it right here. Just straight shot. But I, I've used them, you know, after I set up farms and everything to get increased variety, generally second or third year. But never once have I started with one. But I, I have read that they are the absolute best source of food starting off. And we're playing this a little differently than we normally do. So that's what we're working on. And we're going to need a woodcutter too. Starting off. So I'll just plop you right here. Yeah. Normally I try to build my cities and villages a little bit more structured. But I'm going a little hardcore. So I always I always run on Oh, I should probably make these builders. Oops. Everybody's a builder. That way we can get all this built before winter hits. We don't have a lot of time. Boom, there's a house, there's a house, there's a house, there's a house. I love when you're dealing with such a low population, because they freaking move. Let's see. We're doing. Oh, did we run out of stone already? Wow. Alright, so we're gonna pause. Collect stone. And we're just gonna collect all the stone we can from our immediate surroundings. Go, go, go. I don't know if they're collecting the stone, so I'm gonna branch off some laborers to do that. See, I love this game, but I haven't done too much research. Um, I, as I said, I love playing games. I'm not the best at them, and I'm never going to be the best, so I'm not going to try to be the best. I'm not going to say that this way is the end-all way to do this way, and this way is the best way to do this way. It's not really what gaming's about. It's not about being the best, it's just about enjoying yourself. 
Alright, so we have the spot on pen for a woodcutter. So, now, as you remember, I have a mod that makes woodcutters better, but we're only going to set one woodcutter right now. Now we're going to increase the maximum woodcutters up, just so that when we're ready we can remember that we need woodcutters. But I'm only going to need one woodcutter, hopefully, for winter. Now we got our fishermen, so we're going to dump four y'all losers into being fishermen. And we should start increasing our food ever so slightly. Now, oh, there we go. We got our... Why am I blinking? Our gatherer. Jeez, why was I blinking? It's because it's not down here in my face, behind my face. So we're going to go ahead and put three gatherers there, decrease builders, because I have nothing left I'm building right now. Um, but I will make the smart choice of probably... Hmm. I might... I might make another. No, 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 not yet. I am going to put in a Forester's Lodge. We don't need it to be big, we just need it to kind of keep maintaining the forest. Now, which way is the roadway? Because that is the best way. I believe I faced it this way, so. We're going to plop you in right here. Kiki! The Kiki demands attention. Let me show her off. Come here, Kiki. Come here. This is the Kiki. First episode I'm doing, and you're already meeting the screaming cat. What does that say about her? She is a sweetie. Alright, run along, Kiki. Come on. Alright. So, we've got three people who aren't doing jack squat. So, well, we're going to check this range here. No, no, no. We actually have an open little spot. And I... Never mind. I just realized we put in a forester's lodge. That's what those people are doing. Because we're going to need wood to actually make the firewood. And look at that, we only have two. Real quick. I'm going to... Just start clearing some space this way. I don't know why this way particularly. This way is just as good. Okay. But we're gonna clear, sp start clearing space over here so that we can develop a little bit more. What am I building? Oh yeah, Forester's Lodge. So. We are in summer of year one. We have 11 adults, 7 children. Now, cool thing is, you can actually check on your houses and see who's in them. And... I'm gonna say we, need, we should build another house just to... pop up our... so our population keeps going up. So I'll set... Couple more. We don't want it to increase too fast, but it never. Okay. So increases so slowly when you need it, and too fast when you don't. And it's it's it. Oh, I think I paused it. There we go. So we are building up our food, as you see. These guys are getting a little forest done, or foresting tree thing. Now we're going to go ahead and real quick drop two people to be foresters right now. We still want to be a little varied. We want someone building these houses so that we can expand. And we're into early autumn. So, as far as episode length, I knew this, this episode of course is going to be 
a long one because I was doing the intro and I was, you know, explaining the mods and everything, and that took up like seven minutes of time. Oh, I forgot. There's a fuel limit. So when you reach a fuel limit, they'll just stop making things. So I normally set things for nine 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 nine, or however many nines it actually lets me put. But that's what I type. I just put a bunch of nines in there so that it's the max. But because we're playing with disasters, I'm a little bit more scared. <laughs> so we'll increase production as things get better. But right now, 1500, 1500 is a pretty high amount of firewood. Let me go over to Forester. We're not going to stop at only 200 logs. We're going to keep going. We want, on logs, we want infinite logs. Logs for days. Now, what is our builder doing? That person is Mira. She is age six and she is building your house. Trust in Mira. Oh, it looks like we are getting snow. Time to see how we survive our first winter. We got plenty of food. Absolutely plenty of food. Wow. I got it. It's awesome. We're going to definitely set the food limit to as high as we can, because you can never have too much food. Uh-oh. I am running out of room. So, new building project. Another storage barn. We'll just... Plop one... Well, wow. Plopping one would have been there would have been great, but... I guess not. See, you want to do things nice. You really do. Here, I will put it here and have it kind of match up with that house. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it does. But you can never have too many storage barns. Just make an entire warehouse district if you have to. Um, and we are approaching late winter. So once we hit spring, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode. We're just going to do like one year at a time. Uh, we'll do like a, a quick overview of what we did, but I mean, we didn't really do that much. And maybe if the episodes are seeming too short with the one year at a time, I might, I might bring it up to two years at a time. And of course, there's just gonna be some years where you're just sitting there. So we are at early spring, and I think we are going to go ahead and end the episode, because it is getting a little longer, and this is probably going to be the longest episode there is, because I'm not going to explain the mods every time. So, quick overview. We built houses. We built that log cutter. Fishing dock. We got a lot of houses coming in next year. Um, some warehouses, because we are stuffed on the amount of food we've got. A lot of fish. Jeez, a lot of fish. And then we've got our little gatherer's hut. Which that radius is the amount that they gather to. So you don't want to build anything in that radius. Now obviously I put the forester's lodge there because they put more trees up. And that allows the forest to grow older. Even though you are cutting down trees, you're planting new trees. So, you're still pretty good. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and end it there. Thank you so much for watching. And don't don't forget to... Yeah, thank you for watching. <laughs> let, me, let me try that again. Don't forget to subscribe. Definitely leave me some likes if you like the video, if you like what I'm doing. And please, please comment. I, I want to hear from you guys. I love interacting with everyone and anyone. I'm incredibly incredibly social even though I don't act like it in real life I am really social so yeah I will see you guys next episode